What's the link between this and this? And why did a city full of these decide it was time for one of these? We've got 200 years of coal and we've got hardly any gas or oil. Garden lawns are going to be a thing of the past. We'll look back and say, my God, how do we allow this to go on? We live in a disposable society, and that's the problem. The ones that are left behind say, oh, well, I don't care, I won't be here, it doesn't matter. If we don't act now, there won't be a future for our children. I think we are lagging behind other more progressive European countries. Well, they should have been doing this a long time ago. But I don't know enough about what we should be doing to, uh, to, to make a difference. For over 30 years, City of York Council's commercial services have been run from this building in Foss Islands Road. But the world has changed since the 1960s. Growing awareness of the impact we are having on our environment has transformed the way we think about energy use and energy waste. It is no longer acceptable in a world where water is an ever more precious resource to be cleaning trucks in drinking water. Nor is it acceptable to construct buildings that are too cold in winter and too hot in summer. With the Eco Depot, the city of York is reinventing itself and has become a leading exemplar of sustainable construction. It has taken individuals and organizations with real vision to bring York the largest timber-framed straw-clad building in the whole of Europe. City of York Council has worked with Yorkshire Forward, DTI, Carillion, and forward-thinking architects Craig White and Hayden Scarborough to bring this vision to life. Prefabricated straw cladding panels, assembled from local straw, using local skills, provide walls that are far better insulators than current building regulations require, dramatically reducing the energy requirement of the building. The working temperature inside the building is regulated by an intelligent climate control system. Working from weather forecasts, the building adjusts its own temperature through the night to ensure comfortable working conditions the following day, adjusting temperature and ventilation as necessary. Rainwater provides the water to clean the city's trucks, saving tens of thousands of pounds in water bills. Harnessing the power of the sun, the largest photovoltaic array in York will provide solar energy to power the building. In the new year, a wind turbine will be added to further reduce energy bills. But the Eco Depot is more than a building, it is also a story. Webcams and blogs have allowed residents to follow the progress of construction. Education packs and books are being produced to link the Eco Depot into the curriculum. A website will allow access to the information gathered about the energy performance of the building. The building itself houses an interpretation room to which students and developers and residents will come to learn about environmental sustainability. Unlike many sustainable buildings, the Eco Depot is more than an icon. It offers a real and practical method of transforming the building industry, providing a method of using the fantastic insulating properties of straw in a way that is adapted to mainstream construction. The Eco Depot represents the beginning of the third age of York, from medieval historic city, through the industrial age of manufacturing, and on to the post-industrial age. York is embracing the need to adapt to the requirements of the 21st century, to reduce CO2 emissions, to show a practical commitment to tackling climate change. To face the challenges of this century, we need to demonstrate the will to move forward. With the Eco Depot, the city of York is showing the determination to do just that.